It's time for my virtual Jericho with John Mayer. Hello, welcome to the second to last my virtual Jericho of, of the run. Next week is the very last one. Tonight's very, very exciting. It's a, a, it's a drama. It's lots of things happening. In it. It's an art fair. There's Peter Taylor in the church and the BBC is in its death throes. But first off, though, let, let's talk about the um, the Jericho Art Fair. That's, that's on Saturday the 24th of July. That, that's in, in Canal Street, uh, in, in Mount Place, just the end of Canal Street. And that's from 12 till 4. Everybody's welcome. It, it, it's there. We, they, there'll be music all afternoon. There'll be anything up to 15 artists showing and selling their work. Do come along uh, and uh, uh, enjoy it. Let's, let's talk first to probably one of Oxford's best well-known artists, Raymond Hay. Raymond, um, you, you, um, you, you are a sort of chronicler of, of, of buildings in, in, in Oxford, aren't you? Oh, thank you. I, I did uh, spend lots of time on building site, uh, Jericho, Jericho area, um, Oak Hill uh, site. Let you, you Royal the Observatory Quarter. Should we have a look at some some of your some of your your your, your drawings from there, which I thought were brilliant. There, uh, 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 there, there we are. That's uh, the, okay. this is. Uh, yeah, explain this what, what we... that... Yeah, this yes. is the Ash Molin. Uh, was two thousand nine. Uh, I spent about eight months uh, in the Ash Molin uh, when it was rebuilt. So there's um, the builders. I made some uh, drawings of the builders, um, uh, several hundreds of them. And also this is a mural. So it was so privileged to have a, uh, have a show um, when the new museum was re re uh, reopened. Let's have a look at some of your drawings from, from the observatory quarter. If you could have a look at the next one, please. What's, yeah, what's next, this we've seen? Yeah, this is the Ash Molly as well. The, yeah. This is woodcut. Yeah, this is the. Um, uh, I just used the um, black white the form and produced uh, some um, woodcut reflect um, the the construction site and mainly focus on the the builders. Um, I thought you know this is a rare opportunity for me so closely observe them when they were wor uh, working. So I made a series of uh, woodblock prints. Uh, it's I think uh, some eight pieces. Yeah, so um, I feel so privileged. Thank you. Yeah, let's have a look at the next one if you can, please. So there we are. There's there's the observatory quarter. That's uh, obviously the observatory, and that's that's your 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 drawings along the side. I remember this from maybe five or so years ago. Is that yeah, that correct? was two thousand fourteen. When I worked for uh, the university estates, and so um, yeah, I produced uh, some, uh, several hundred pieces, and uh, the holding showed around seventy pieces of uh, ink paintings and uh, uh, sketches, mostly, and also Sylvia uh, Vetter's poem and uh, Caroline's poem as well, and the observatory uh, is a, you can see it's a center. It's also a topic of my, uh, the theme of all of my work, the center um, is the observatory. And now, you know, I'm the artist in residence of the Green Tamitin College. Uh, which is behind the observatory, place. yes. Which is yeah. just behind the observatory, you're right. That's uh, right. Can we have a look at a, 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 another, another of your, of your uh, illustrations, please? Yeah. So there we are. That's, that's, yeah. that's the, the most famous one, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It's a famous, but uh, yeah, certainly this is the first one uh, on hoarding, and um, I produced this one was two thousand and ten. I just saw such gigantic machine was so powerful, just trans transformed the site at the beginning because I witnessed the demolition uh, from the right beginning. That was two thousand and eight. Um, and um, until uh, it was uh, rebuilt. And this is um, on the, I think it was um, Summerville College student uh, accommodation. Now there's a beautiful building there. So you were there from, from the beginning, from, from destruction right through to creation? Yeah, that's right. How, how did the building workers receive you? 
Um, I think I, I had a really good time with the builders. I got on so well. I just feel I was one of them. Just we did a different job. They built um, the buildings with um, steels, uh, concrete, bricks. Uh, I did the building um, with a brush and pen on paper. So I think we did the same thing in different forms. And so we often, so they, they like to sit for me um, and uh, we got on so well. So, yeah, I really now enjoyed there, the time. You, you did about 70 uh, illustrations, did you, of the observatory quarter, is that correct? Uh, they're just unfolding. I did uh, several hundreds. Uh, I don't remember the exact figure, at least uh, probably 400 or something. But on my uh, the catalog, probably it's uh, nearly 200 pieces of my work. And where, where are they all now? Where are all these wonderful drawings? Um, okay, mostly they're in the, uh, the university collection. And some of them, like uh, the Ashmolean has... Um, some 50 pieces of my work. Uh, of course, mostly it's the rebuilding the Ashmolean ones. And uh, also University Estate Services and Blavanic School of Government and uh, several other colleges, Corpus Christi, they all get uh, some collections of my work. Here's another one of a, of a builder in front of the observatory, yeah. a builder yeah, celebrating. Yeah, this drop down. Uh, it was a bit controversial because, uh, uh, you know, the building company said this is not, uh, not allowed. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> However, I think uh, uh, I could totally understand, you know, when the old hard work is done, uh, it's completed. The builders, they were so excited just to show, just to show their, their uh, excitement. Now, have you got, have you, are you going to do the humanities building in the observatory quarter as well? Are you going to be artists? Are you going to do the humanities uh, building in the observatory quarter? Uh, okay, now I'm the artist in residence of the Green Chamber College. Uh, I do several uh, kind of things. I do uh, the drawing the campus. Sometimes they, they commission me doing some other work for the, uh, the accommodation. And also I do uh, some teaching, uh, like a workshop, to, uh, to share my uh, drawing skills uh, with them. Um, there's no uh, construction work uh, there at the moment, um, but in future they, they might do. Uh, so uh, I'd be interested in drawing a bit more of um, uh, the building site. Because there's a new building coming in, a new humanities building coming in, of course, in the next four or five years. So, so that that should be uh, provide a lot of work, for, a lot of images for you, shouldn't it? Uh, yes, humanity, yes, will be uh, um, built um, in the coming years. Um, but I'm not going to involve in that project uh, you know, anymore um, I, because now I'm in different department of the university. Uh, so I'm, my, my role is uh, the artist in residence um, at the Green Templeton College. Uh, so it's a different role. And also my work uh, style has changed. Uh, so and next year, uh, two of my friends and I will have an uh, exhibition uh, will be totally different styles um, you know, in London, Bankside, Bankside Gallery. Lovely. All right. Now we're hoping, uh, my last question, we're hoping you're going to come to Jericho and maybe uh, do, do a mural for us in, in, in Mount Place. We, we, we'll keep on talking about it. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, if, I can, if, if I can move on to Kamal, Kamal Lava. Uh, another artist who will be there at the at, at the art fair. There it is, Mount Place, twenty uh, fourth of July. Kamal, you you're a born again artist, aren't you? you, 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 you I you, am. You weren't, you weren't trained as I an am. artist. No, no, not at all. I wanted to be an astronaut, and uh, my first degree is in physics and astrophysics. And at that stage, um, I, I discovered there was no astronaut program, and it was a, a slow dawning uh, because I'm also a published um, uh, writer. Um, and uh, really, uh, my kids started uh, me off on that and uh, telling stories and so on. And I think the art actually drew from that because each each particular painting that I do actually has a, a storyline behind it or in it. And, and yeah, it's, it's, how, do you, it's how, 
so how do you divide your time how much of your time is being an artist and how much uh, doing other jobs um i have i'm actually a cyber security specialist as well as a, that, that's my day job um in terms of uh, time it's always the weekends and the evenings that um, uh, whatever is coming up as a, the, the most imperative thing that i need to do i don't have a fixed moment or a fixed way of working Oh, Let's have a look at some of your art, if we can. Uh, we have a look at uh, your, f explain this painting to us, if you can, please. Okay, I just want in this one, um, I'm I'm always taken by the speed and uh, the energy and and the veracity of the actual uh, ballroom dancing couple, and when you look at them, you don't really know which part belongs to whom, and I'm trying to capture that, but in a cubist sense which can actually dissect and abstract from the actual subject matter. And, and, and the next one, please, if you can have a look at that. What, what's, what's, the, what's the explanation of this? Um, well, my natural, um, uh, I was born in India, and an, an awful lot of the time when you watch uh, people go off uh, to just uh, get some water from the well or something, you'll often find ladies sitting there and, and chatting. Uh, and they'll have the bucket almost on, on their shoulder. And most of the time when they're doing this is either very early in the morning or at night when the sun is going down. And I find that the hue and the colors actually mix very, very well at that moment. You, you'll be displaying at the art fair. Will you also be selling some of your work? Uh, I'll be selling all of the work that's being displayed. Uh, yes, I'll be displaying. Um, and we've had se several um, exhibitions and we've even uh, created a pop-up gallery behind the Spice Lounge for the Art Week Fair. Um, but yes, it will be as many of the small works as I can. Um, please come and buy. Okay, let's have a look at a third of your, your pieces if we can. Uh, if you could ex explain this to us. What, what, what's that? The inspiration of this is uh, I wanted to get the sky right in, uh, and this was the first time I was doing layering upon layering to just get a, a real depth. But as, as, as the storyline unfolded, it became a story about watching life in the distance while there's a, a hotel on, as we see it, on the left-hand side, which is full of ghosts, just envying the life on the far distant shore. Where does your imagination come from? Um, I have no idea on that one. I, I, I think what um, uh, th th truly inspired uh, from the actual Tolkien's of the world, um, because I started off with science fiction that I absolutely adored, the iRobots, Asimov and so on. Um, then it slowly um, uh, morphed into uh, fantasy thrillers. Um, and the Tolkien... Um, the Lord of the Rings story just took my entire imagination and captivated me like no other story I've ever done. It's one of the few stories I've read three or four times. Gosh, uh, and the last one, I think, of yours, if we can have a look at that, please. W what's this? Um, I wanted to capture a stylized mess of a, a volcano erupting. And uh, when you see it up close, obviously it's uh, most volcanoes are too dangerous to to get close to. But when you're watching molten lava, it feels so enticing. You just want to actually see the rain for yourself and be there, but obviously not. So stylized it, chaos. Is is it your plan that you will give up be cybersecurity and become a full time artist? Uh, I don't think so, because um, I think my second career, not, not for a while, not for the foreseeable future, but um, certainly my second career, uh, writing stories, fantasy thrillers for kids and so on, is reasonably uh, still going. I'm writing several uh, investigation, um, uh, criminal type uh, stories, a comedy for adults and a self-help book for adults. So that's going strong. Um, my paintings is getting stronger by the minute, um, and I'm hoping to tell more stories in the future. You're obviously a man who know, knows how to use his spare time. Uh, I try not to waste any of it. <laughs> Very good. All right. We, 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 we'll see you on the 24th in, in, in Mount Place. Now, the, the third of the artists we'll feature today is John Temple. John Temple, you, you're, um, 
you're a born again wood turner because that's not that's not your first first job was it how did you get into wood turning we can't hear you uh, we can't hear you never mind Let we see if we can hear john if not i think good. i've unmuted myself okay. can you hear me now okay we can yes how did you get into wood turning well, like Kamal, I've, I've, that's not my first job. My first job was teaching. Uh, and, and like him, I'm a physicist. Or I was a physicist. Um, I got into wood turning about, about seven years ago uh, when my wife gave me as a birthday present one day um, tuition in wood turning with a real wood turner, one to one tuition. And in the morning, we, I made some, he did, got me to do various exercises. But in the afternoon, he let me, he had guided me to making a bowl. And I think you've got we, a picture of it. Which, well, I think we've got a picture of the bowl, actually. If, if we you have it. Oh, yeah, there, 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 there it is, yes. It's a sycamore bowl. Sycamore's a, a very lovely wood to work with. It, People might think it's a native wood, but it isn't. It came from the Middle East. It's mentioned in the Bible. Anyway, right. that was my my first uh, my first piece of wood actually that I turned. That was your I, after, That was an afternoon's yeah. work. It only took you an afternoon, did it? Yes, an afternoon. Yes. Well, you you've since got more adventures. Let's have a look at another of your pieces if we can. What, well, what are these? There, there is a, a couple of of candlesticks which i love making in birch but it's not just birch it's spalted birch uh, you can see the black lines on it that, that that's called spalting and it, it's i think it's due to a fungus actually that grows but it gives a very special effect doesn't it i love that yes. and, and, and a third piece of yours if we can have a look please oh this is the clock which i thought was rather good yes. explain explain a bit <laughs> Thank about you that very much uh, that that actually is quite interesting. It, I, I I think it's um, made of ash, but I'm not absolutely certain about that. But I was given the the mechanism for it, the you know the the, the works uh, by a friend. Actually, no, not by a friend, by my daughter. And then her her daughter, and is now the owner of it because they gave it to her. But I think it's really quite interesting because if you look at the grain, it looks as if there's a fire at the bottom and then mm -hmm. smoke goes up and drifts away. And I think it's quite really evocative. At the top is very calm sky. Um, but it, I think it's interesting in, as well in that if you look at the numbers, they're Roman numerals, and they're not usually put on a clock like that. Uh, I think actually you might be able to see a clock in the background of, of if you can see me as well, you might be able to see a, a clock and the Roman numerals on that uh, all point towards the middle, but on, on the clock that I made, um, they're, they're the right way up so you can see them. Uh, you can see from nine till three, they're just as you would expect them, but from well, reading from the left to the right, from eight to four, they're, they're the right way up, instead of pointing uh, to the centre. You know, will, will you, you'll be at the art fair on the 24th, will you be selling some of your wood turns? Not, not the clock and obviously not my sycamore bowl. I think I've still got the candles, yes. They, I yep. certainly will be uh, selling either what you see now or something similar. Let's have a look at another piece if we can. John, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, another of your pieces. What, what's this one? That's just a little box. And it's made of a wood called Miranti, which comes, it's a hard wood, but not as hard as oak. And it comes from Southeast Asia, Malaysia, I think. Um, but I particularly like that because I managed to make the grain of the lid match. You can see, you can see the line of the of the lid about a quarter of the way down from the top that just pulls off and it's a 
It's a box, a little trinket box. It's only about, what, three inches high, but I'm rather fond of that piece, actually. How, how long did a piece like that take you to, to, to make? Oh, a few hours. And now you've got some goblets on the screen. Yes. Um, the, the, <laughs> I've got, I'm going to have some goblets at, at the show on the 24th, but there right. are various, various um, woods there. The, the one at the, the highest one is ash. No, sorry, not ash, sycamore. Um, and then there's, there's um, cherry, which is on the left of it, as you look at it, um, and various other, uh, various other woods. I like experimenting with different woods. Um, I'm not very good at remembering what they are, I'm afraid. But there we yeah, are. But, but really then let's have a, have a look at your final piece, maybe. The zebra uh, hang on a minute. Yeah, you, can you go back and see the, the feature of some of them is that they've got a captive ring. I'm rather key. I rather like doing that. Oh. And you see on some of them. In fact, actually, yes. all, no, not all of them. Okay, and the, the, let's, let's have a look at the zebra dish, if we can, which I thought was rather good. Do you? Yes. That's uh, also a hardwood, and, and that's not going to be on sale because I made that for um, some friends of my son for, for a wedding present. But it's called zebra wood, as you, as you said, and you can yeah. see why. It comes oh. from, originally from Central America, but now you can get it from Brazil and, and also actually from Central Africa. So How long is it since you had that class that, with, that your wife gave you? How many years have you been turning wood for? Seven. Seven years? You've done, and how many pieces have you made in that time? Any idea? Oh, <laughs> I, really, I can't tell you. Um, several hundred. Several hundred, gosh. All right, we will look forward to seeing you on the 24th. Thank you for joining us. And like all good programs, we will have a commercial now. Let's have a commercial Thank on, on Jericho's you. art from Jericho's art gallery. This is from uh, Rona Painting in Walton Street, which you, you'll know is just next door to Cowboy Mod. Uh, Rona can't be with us, but she has actually sent us what I think is a brilliant commercial. Let's have a look at it. To like like to be able to draw like that. Rona Painter is in is in Walton Street. Rona will be there on Saturday, twenty fourth. So do come along and, and see what she has on display. And also do go beforehand. She's open uh, most days. Uh, uh, and uh, Sylvia Sylvia Vetter is always around on about these events. Sylvia, you're the sort of cultural emperor of Oxford, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> I don't think so, John. I think that's you, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. I just fix things. No, well, certainly but, fix uh, them, uh, yeah. So tell, but, tell, tell us about the town. I guess, I, I, guess I, I, I was very fortunate, of course, when I was writing for the Oxford Times for 10 years, I wrote the Castaway series. So I got to know some amazing people. In fact, you know, I cast 120 people on my mythological island of Oxtopia, including Wei Min. Right. And, and Tower of the Winds, what's the relevance of that? That's Wei Min's book that I'm going to be selling, um, you know, on... on uh, that's... Uh, it's absolutely stunning. It's a limited edition, and we'll be selling it at £9 less than it is in the Bodleian, and Wei Min will come between one and two so he can sign copies. Um, and How if in the mean you, you'd like to see some, you know, you saw the hoardings. Well, yes. um, if you, I've put a blog on my website with a link to that, that, to that exhibition, to all those hoardings. So if you're interested in seeing them again, 
if you go to my website, click on the link, you can see all the Wayman's hoardings. I think I think we've got we've got an illustration from from that, haven't we? That from your blog. Here we are. This is Wayman and the hoardings. Yeah, and, and, and yes, the this reason, from... yes, the reason I'm with him was that. I, I got to know him while I was writing for the Oxford Times. I reviewed the show in the Ashmolean. And um, then when he was working there, I thought, well, you know, he is actually an academic. He, he is actually, he has got a PhD as well as, uh, you know, being a practicing artist. And um, I thought he might feel a little bit isolated. And in Chinese arts, poetry and art are very close. So we started the Art Poet Project and I introduced him to the Jericho Poets and to some other groups. And we, we had supper at my house and they saw his work and we worked on some poems. And we sent them with anonymously to the university and they picked two, but um, one of them they picked was mine, you see. So that's why I'm there with but, him in uh, that uh, picture. Do we, do we have another illustration that from, from your blog? There we are. That, that's James Harrison. Is that James Harrison, the Wayman? No, 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 it isn't, no, it isn't James Peter Harrison. Wait, he, he, he's a very Peter famous uh, print. He's a very famous printer. But um, when, that was in St. Luke's, which is on that site. And that was the launch of Wayman's book. Uh, and, it, and, the, and it's called Tower of the Wind. So that's the one we'll be selling on the 27th. 24th, um, and, and, 20, 20. 24. Hey, sorry, that's right. I keep getting the date wrong, but I will be there, honestly. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and other, any other illustrations from your blog? There we are, Sculpting the Elephant. What's the relevance of that? Story? Yes, well, basically, that's my novel, which is half set in Jericho. And Harry King, the protagonist, is an artist, uh, but he has to earn a living, which is not easy. So he starts a, sh a business in Jericho opposite the Jericho Tavern called Deco Raters. So anyway, so I'll be bringing um, some copies, uh, you know, of both of my novels that uh, and Brushstrokes in Time is also about um, an art movement in China, in the background to it, the stars art movement, where Ai Weiwei began his career. So I'll be bringing those two books, but I'll also be bringing um some deco which the kind of thing that harry might have sold and the other thing i'll be bring, bringing because i used to be in the trade and i've got some 19th century and early 20th century watercolors um that i'm you know happy now to sell um because i really need to get rid of a few things you know <laughs> and, uh, so I, i'm happy to sell a, a really um, giveaway price. This, this, oh, is, this is one of the water. No, yes. no, that is me by Wei Min. <laughs> That's very, very nice. <laughs> yeah. So, but so also, uh, yeah, go I'll on. So you'll be there. Uh, these, yes, I'll bring some of these. And that Wei Min illustrated, did the cover, and his life story is in there. And there's a life story of a few other artists as well, actually. So I'll, I'll be I'll be bringing this. So if you want to know how Wayman came here from Manchuria, um, you'll be able to. It, the story's in that book. So that's that's on the twenty fourth, uh, Sylvia. Now looking back two or three weeks, you and I did the Jericho Book Fair together. What are your yes. recollections of that? Well, as you know, the forecast was not good, and I think we all thought. We've worked very, very hard for quite a few months planning it, hadn't we? we and had. we thought it was all going to be a washout. Anyway, as you know, we got there and the forecast was it was dry in the morning, but wet in the afternoon. But unfortunately, just as soon as Charlotte Bannister Park was opening it, it rained on her. But it only rained for 10 minutes. And after that... It, despite the grey skies, it was a very sunny atmosphere. And we had, I think, up to, with, with the exhibitors, there must have been altogether about 300 people come. And um, they didn't come all at once. It was all nicely spread out. And what was, everybody was, I don't know, suddenly relaxed. And it was like a lot of frustration um, 
came out of them because they they suddenly were meeting people they hadn't seen for such a long time so it was a lovely atmosphere i've not met anybody who didn't enjoy it not the people exhibiting or people coming so i'm hoping it'll be the same so what, what, what did it yeah what did it add to jericho do you think that little event well i mean i didn't <laughs> I, I really didn't know much. I, I don't, obviously, I'm not actually, I'm sorry, although I've written, uh, uh, because I ran the Jam Factory, I've known, um, and I named the Jam Factory, I, I've known Jericho for a long, long time, but I don't live in Jericho. I, don't, I couldn't afford to live there, I don't think. And uh, I live in Kennington. But, um, yeah, I, I think, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going off on a tangent there no, think, but um, what, 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 why should people come to the art fair what reason what reasons can you give them well i think you we, we need to i think community is important don't you i think i don't think we want to do this all the time on the screen i think it's very important to meet people face to face and i think it's creativity is what's kept a lot of people going through the last two years and so i think it's great to be able to talk to creative people and you've already had some on and so i think you know it's it's a great way to meet and it doesn't matter who you are what your background is. you could be any age any color any religion you know any any to do any job you're all equal in those kind of settings let's, let's have a look at Let's have a look at the slide if we can again, and when 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 the art fair is if we can, Phil. But let's um, there we are. Let, let, just just so we get the date right, Sylvia. That's twenty fourth of July from from <laughs> eleven to four in Mount Place, which is the end of Canal Street by uh, by the bridge. Uh, come along, and there'll be up to fifteen, maybe more artists there. There'll be uh, of all all variations. But uh, Sylvia, thank you very much. We'll um, we we'll, we'll look forward to to see seeing you there. Let's uh, time for another commercial. Let's let's. Let's have a look at uh, what Deborah Williams will be will be doing on the twenty fourth. I'm Deborah Williams. I'm a painter, although I also use collage and pastel. I'll be bringing a range of work to Jericho Art Fair: some originals, also gicle prints and cards. What do I paint? I'm inspired by anything I see around me, but my main love is people. Usually, people in action or engrossed in activities, often with the idea of community. I've also been inspired recently by ancient people, ancient Greek culture to be precise. I wanted a framework for a series of works on the idea of identity and I found it in the Caryatids on the Acropolis and the Friezes at Delphi. And linked to these, if less obviously Greek, making space and not enough room. I hope this gives you a flavour of my work. Do come to the fair to see more. There we are, that's Deborah Williams. And in case you missed the details, perhaps we could see, see the poster again. It, it is on Saturday the 24th of July from 11 or 12 till 4 o'clock at Mount Place in Jericho. It's by the Canal Bridge, it's the end of Canal Street. Uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be live music all afternoon, courtesy of, of Towpath Productions. And moving on, if we can, to uh, things happen, lots of things happen in Jericho. We may be coming back to the artists at the end. Um, this Saturday in Jericho, there's going to be a litter pick, a community litter pick, um, uh, which will start from 10, 10.30, in the community centre, Canal Street, and we'll provide tongs and bags. Some of you know that I, I do a daily litter pick. I'm a very sad person. I go around every day and litter pick in Jericho. But this is the whole community joining in, and we've actually managed to transform Jericho into a clean and green environment. So do come along to that. But meanwhile, if, if we can see all the artists again, thank you all very much indeed for, for taking part. And, 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 and yet another event in, in Jericho next Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock, in, in the great St Barnabas Church, Peter Taylor, who is the one of the, one of the one of the absolute uh, uh, greats of British broadcasting, man who spent fifty years reporting Northern Ireland, Al Qaeda, and, and and other terrorist groups, and who is trusted by all sorts of people, he'll be talking live for the first time, alive at my Jericho for uh, in the church at six o'clock. It'll cost five pounds, but that'll go towards the church organ fund. Let's see who Peter is. Let's, let's, have, let's have a view of his work. Okay, Peter, I think if you're happy to take your mask off, let's do it without the mask. I'll take the mask off. Steams up my glasses. So 
So why is an Englishman still looking at the Irish question? Don't say I never bought you anything, Peter. What do I owe you? You owe me nothing. After he's been studying it, following it, reporting it for 50 years. The answer is because the Irish question has still never been resolved. And this year is the centenary of partition, the legislation that divided the island into two separate states in 1921, separated by a border. People tend to forget that partition was meant to be a temporary solution that contained therein the mechanism for an eventual United Ireland. They're still under the British crown. It's unionists that you have to persuade. Yes, but what we have to do, first of all, Peter, is to persuade the British. Peter, I live in Belfast, but I'm as British as anybody in Bradford or Birmingham, and we need to be treated the same way. I'm going to use the films that I've made over the past 50 years to explore the issue of a united island, which remains as contentious today as it has ever been, not just for the people of Northern Ireland, but for the people of the rest of the United Kingdom. I began covering Northern Ireland in 1972, almost 50 years ago now. By the Easter of that year, the troubles were dominating the news headlines. There were bombs going off. People were being killed. It was just a horrendous situation. The prevalent view was, why are British soldiers getting killed, ambushed, murdered by the IRA? It's a waste of time, it's a waste of money, let's get out. Tom Edmondson is a bus driver. He's 33 and lives in Hull. He's married and has five children. Tom sees Ulster on the television and in the newspapers every day. I ended up at a bus depot in Hull and did these interviews, what we call a vox pop, with, with bus drivers. They don't really want to be British. They don't want rule from Westminster. They want to rule themselves. They're 50, 100 years behind the times. We should be able to expect some help from the Irish people themselves, and you're just not getting it. And if you're defending people who aren't helping you, why bother to defend the buggers? Let them sort it out Let them sort it out among themselves. So I met Tom afterwards. I met Doris. His, uh, his lovely wife. And I said, how would you feel about coming over to Belfast for a week so you can see for yourself and you can ask questions and I'll introduce you to all sides of the argument and you, you can obviously make up your own minds. Look at yeah, that. Look here. It's an army post with soldiers up there. Is there? Where? In there. Is there? Yeah. They just reacted to what they saw. Tom, look at these at this side. Oh, yeah. You have to see it to believe it. You really are. Oh, they are. Oh. Mm. Here's another army post, Tom. Where? Here, look, this one. And that was the first thing that hit me, that the reality of things on the ground were a million miles from the perception that they had watching it on the telly back home in, uh, back home in Hull. The furthest Doris had travelled before was a day trip to York. I remember we took them to a bomb which had just gone off and a news agent had been destroyed. Hell of a mess, isn't it? Hey? This is rubbish. There's no sense in it, is there? There's no sense at all. And Tom just looked at me, just couldn't understand it. He said, but, you know, if this had happened in Hull... Daily Mill had been full of it for a year. I've just been talking to that policeman and he said, oh, it's one of them things, one of them things. The place is entirely wrecked, it's blown out. Tom knew nothing about Northern Ireland, but his or our then political masters knew virtually nothing about Northern Ireland. Crossing from a Protestant to a Catholic area means crossing the army's peace line, and that inevitably means crossing a checkpoint. 
One of the really seminal meetings that I arranged for Tom and Doris was to meet a Republican family, died in the green Republican family. The father had been interned. They were a middle-class family. I think it's very doubtful, unless the border is abolished altogether, that there will ever be peace. No, 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 to be no, no, no. I want it, no, that, no, and it's simple, like, it's Great Britain, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. But why should, why should Ireland be combined to Britain when it's Ireland and it has its own government down south? It always had its own government until England came and put a border between it. I remember thinking at the time, this is it. This is what I came here to do and this is why I brought Tom and Doris here. Has your week in Belfast made you change your mind about the situation, Tom? Completely. I, I couldn't desert these people. You'd have to be a very callous man, more callous than I could be, I'm afraid, to desert these, to take the army away and absolutely leave them to it. Absolute reversal of opinion towards the other thing. It was a learning process for Tom and Doris, but Busman's holiday was also the beginning of a learning process for me. So there we are, Peter Taylor, who is a really true broadcasting great. He spent 50 years since Bloody Sunday reporting Northern Ireland, uh, reporting bombs, terrorism. He's trusted by both sides. He, he, he told me he's only ever been threatened once in those 50 years. And Peter will be live and in the flesh in St Barnabas, uh, talking about uh, Northern Ireland, talking about religion, talking about God and guns. And some of you may know that actually the, the vicar is from Northern Ireland, so it'll be, it'll be rather, um, rather uh, true to home for him. If you can, please come along next Tuesday the 20th at 6 o'clock at St Barnabas, and it'll only cost you a fiver, but this is a chance to see in the flesh lit literally one, one, one of, one of uh, British TV's greats. And mo moving on from that, if we can, the, um, the BBC is in a bit of trouble, isn't it? Uh, it? It seems to, day after day after day, seems to get itself in, into trouble. If you read the Daily Telegraph, it's, it's, it's the devil incarnate in the BBC. It's, uh, you know, with, with Martin Bashir, with, with Jimmy Savile, with lots of other things. The BBC is 100 years old next year. But will it survive beyond those 100 years? That's the big, big question. I've just edited a book on this, uh, which you're very welcome to buy. Uh, and, and next uh, Wednesday at, uh, at 6 o'clock on, on, on YouTube, you, you can see a, a, a programme all about this, with uh, a chaired by Sir Anthony Selden, the, the very distinguished uh, historian, and, and, and with some, some, some stars of, of past and present BBC arguing the toss. I mean, the BBC is having a very hard press. Let's have a look at uh, a brace of uh, director generals and how they how they looked in front of the select committee just last month. Three BBC director generals, past and present, and contrition was the order of the day. I'll start by saying, if I might, to to acknowledge um, how hard this has been, uh, the Lord Dice investigation for the royal family for the two princes. It is an absolute horror story and it should never have happened. Clearly for us as an institution that cares so deeply and has a, an outstanding track record in terms of journalistic integrity, it was a very low moment for us. What role did you see for yourself as Princess of Wales? Did you have Investigating Martin Bashir's use of fate documents to secure his royal scoop, it was Tony Hall who concluded, despite everything, the reporter was honest and honourable, words that have come back to haunt him. We were lied to and our trust was uh, misplaced. And, and, you know, bluntly, Bashir um, uh, took us all in. There was disbelief in the Commons a, Committee room. It reminds me of the people who appear on the radio to talk about a, um, a fraudster that phoned them up and tricked them into giving their bank details. Martin Bashir said while mocking up documents was a stupid thing to do, and he regretted it, it had no bearing on Diana's decision to be interviewed. An internal report yesterday said there was no cover-up in the rehiring of Martin Bashir in 2016. Today there was disbelief from Princess Diana's brother, Earl Spencer. What's so staggering about the BBC in this whole matter is how they keep ploughing on in, in I think, a, a very self-destructive way. At times, today's hearing was heated. My reading. Of why, why did you again? allow the language to be used? Uh, uh, no, please, please. No, no, I, I'm really I sorry. No, order, order, order. order. But there was no doubt that Tony Hall, director of news when the Diana interview went out, and director general when Bashir was rehired, was the focus of the questioning. He gave this plea for his legacy. Twenty-five years ago, um, myself and everybody believed Bashir. We made a mistake. 
but please don't let that colour the other things that I've done and which I can enumerate but obviously won't in terms of my public record of public service over 35 years. For the institution that places trust as its core value, this was a painful day. Nina Nanar, News at 10. So there we are. The BBC is nearly 100 years old, 100 years old next October. But will it survive? It's in deep, deep trouble. I mean, uh, Martin, the Martin Bashir uh, episode has given its enemies all, all the ammunition they want. It was Christmas's come home for the, for the right wing tabloid press. They would like to see the BBC destroyed. Why don't you join us at six o'clock next Wednesday, 20, 21st of July, when uh, Sir Anthony Selden and a distinguished cast will be talking about just this question. And if you want to buy the book, by the way, it, it, it's available on Amazon. And, and, and finally, uh, let's uh, move on to, uh, as this is the second last program, the, these, uh, the, this whole thing costs quite a lot of money. In the course of the last year, I think we've probably spent about a thousand pounds bringing my Jericho to you in terms of refining it, buying software, buying hardware, paying, paying for websites and so on. If you feel you would like to help this poor man who, who lives in Jericho, sorry about that, Sylvia, uh, perhaps you'd like to contribute to the crowd crowd fund. <laughs> here, here, here are the details of the crowd fund. Uh, if you, uh, it's Lloyd's, Lloyd's Bank, sort code 309626. That's 309626. And the account is 4851 The account name is Jericho Good Works. So please uh, tip tip a bit of money in, into that. Uh, every little bit helps. There's just so there's just one one live my Jericho to come next week, and, and one uh, one live in Symbolmus and one live in in, in in on air. That'll be next Wednesday. After that, it, it it's time for the summer and time to take a break, probably until at least the end of August. Um, None of this would have been possible without my, my friend Phil Barnes, who is a technical guru that makes it all happen. This is why why it looks so good. People say this looks like television to me. It, it doesn't look like Zoom, which I suppose is a is a great compliment. But you know, uh, Phil deserves huge huge thanks for this, as do you for watching. So meanwhile, uh, try and come to uh, some some of the events next week. Try and come to the litter pick. It's come to the art fair. There there are three events next week. All of them are open to anybody who would like to turn up. Please, please come along, um, and we'll see you on air next uh, uh, next Wednesday at six o'clock for for the BBC event, or live for Peter Taylor in the church on the twentieth. Thank you very much, and, and good night. <laughs>